Good morning, everybody. My name is Betal Charisse Alabaso. And for this topic, we will focus on the soil nutrient deficiency symptoms of soybean and mung bean. Plants require 17 essential elements for growth and development. These nutrients can be obtained from water and air or can be obtained from the soil. So as I mentioned, we will focus on the soil nutrient deficiency. The first nutrient is nitrogen. Plants take up nitrogen from the soil as ammonium or nitrate. Soybean plants should continue to uptake nitrogen during the vegetative and reproductive stages to produce a high yield. Soybean plants assimilate the nitrogen from three sources, the symbiotic nitrogen fixation by root nodules, nitrogen from the soil mineralized nitrogen, and nitrogen derived from fertilizer. Soybean nitrogen deficiency is characterized by stunted plants, leaves with light green color or chlorosis that appears first on lower or older leaves, and it has poor nodulation on roots. Low nitrogen availability can develop early in the crop cycle in water-saturated soils, reducing rhizobium nodulation. In general, effective nodulation will occur after the excess water has been drained. Nitrogen deficiency can also be caused by low pH or unfavorable soil conditions that prevent nodulation. According to Bagale, in his study, Nutrient Management for Soybean Crops, the nodulation of soybean is adversely affected when the soil pH drops below 6. For the management of acidic soil, lining can be done and it increases biological nitrogen fixation. In mung bean, nitrogen fertilizer induces rhizobia formation and promotes the growth of strong mung bean seedlings. Increasing the application of nitrogen fertilizer during the early growth period promotes vegetative growth and creates conditions favoring high yield. Factors that affect either nodulation or nitrogen fixation can result in nitrogen deficiency. Among these factors are the absence of an effective strain of rhizobium, low pH, and deficiency of molybdenum, cobalt, sulfur, or boron. Mung bean nitrogen deficiency is characterized by leaves, petioles, and stems turning lighter green in color, affecting both younger and older leaves. And in severe cases, a light brown pigmentation developed in intervenal areas on the upper surface of leaves. The next is phosphorus. Phosphorus is a macronutrient required for proper functioning of plants. Deficiency of this nutrient can reduce plant growth and development. It is known as the second most important macronutrient required by plants. However, its availability as soluble form is limited because of its fixation as insoluble phosphates of iron, aluminum, and calcium in the soil. In phosphate-solubilizing microbes, or the phosphate-solubilizing microbes are a group of beneficial microorganisms responsible and capable of hydrolyzing organic and inorganic insoluble phosphorus compounds to soluble phosphorus for plant assimilation. Phosphorus deficiency is more likely to occur in low pH soils where phosphorus is less readily available to plants. Acidic compacted soils with damaged root systems can also cause phosphorus deficiency. In soybean, when phosphorus is deficient, stunted plants and leaves with dark green purple or bluish tint appear on lower or older leaves and root development may not be extensive. While in mung bean, when phosphorus is deficient, plants remain dark green 
initially and leaflets are smaller than on plants with adequate phosphorus. Lower leaves lose color and exhibit a blotchy green appearance. Brown coloration may develop adjacent to the small veins on the leaves. Okay. Next is potassium. Potassium helps the formation and conversion of energy and sugar that the crops need for development through, through photosynthesis process which improves the quality and yield of crops. It, is also, it also plays an important role in enzyme activation during nodulation. Soybean has a high potassium requirement. In fact, a mature soybean seed contains 60% of the total potassium content of the plant. So this nutrient can be rich from coarse texture coarse textured soils due to excessive rainfall. In soybean, potassium deficiency can be observed as yellowing, reddening, and dying leaf margins on lower or older leaves during vegetative growth and on the upper or younger leaves during green field. Stunted plants is common and in addition, Potassium deficiency is common or common during doubt conditions. In mung bean, it can be observed as malformation of leaves midway down on the stem. The leaflets are severely crinked and crinkled. As the potassium deficiency becomes acute, the lower leaves turn lighter green. Next is sulfur. The available form of sulfur is sulfate. It is an important component of some amino acids that link together to form proteins. Sulfur is also a component of plant proto, um, protoplasts and enzymes. Low levels of organic matter or excessive watering can cause sulfur deficiency. In soybean, sulfur enhances the growth, productivity, and oil percentage in soybean seeds. Sulfate can leach through sandy surface soils but usually accumulate in clay subsoil. So in soybean, sulfur enhances So in soybean, sulfur deficiency can be observed in younger leaves that are small and pale yellow green. Stems are thin, hard, and elongated. While in mung bean, the first symptom of sulfur deficiency is the yellowing of the upper leaves and pecules. Red-purple color accumulates on the petioles particularly on the end adjacent to petiolules and as sulfur deficiency becomes more severe, lower leaves also become lighter green in color. Next is calcium. Calcium ion is the available form of calcium for plant growth. It is required for cell division cell elongation, and cell structure. Calcium has direct and indirect effects on soybean. It, pla uh, it plays an important role in nitrogen fixation and it maintains soil pH for nitrogen availability or for nutrient availability. Deficiency of this element leads to an immediate reduction in growth rate followed by gradual browning of root tips and ultimately death of plants. Brown spots on young leaves and premature leaf senescence occur. It also, it also reduces leaf expansion and deficiency occurs in acid sandy soil low in organic matter. 
while in mangbing, deficiency affects the younger leaves at the top of the plant. Older leaves near the base are normal and remain dark green. Expanding leaves fall to fail to develop and leaflets abs and roots are shot and thick with black tips. So next is magnesium. Magnesium is the central part of the chlorophyll molecule where photosynthesis occurs. It is also required in biological real system, enzyme activation, and carrying oxygen in nitrogen fixation. Magnesium deficiency is rare in soil. It can be diagnosed in coarse soil having low cation exchange capacity. So in soybean, magnesium deficiency is first seen as intervenal chlorosis on older or lower leaves. Leaf margins are bent down. While in mangbin, magnesium deficient plants leaves tend to droop and curl, light green in color than the normal plants. And gray green scalded areas develop between the major veins on the leaflets of fully expanded leaves. So the next nutrient is boron. Boron nutrient is essential for crop growth development, production, and seed quality. It is taken up by plants as an uncharged molecule or as an ion. Because of its charge, it is easily leached out of the soil. Boron also promotes the translocation of sugar and cell development and is believed to be important for growth regulators. Alkaline soil or soil with excessively high pH may reduce boron availability. In soybean production, boron deficient plants may result in shortened internodes, yellowing or rendering of upper leaves, and deformed or dead terminal of growing points. In mung bean, boron deficient plants remain dark green. Leaflets are thicker than normal plants, and it tends to droop downward and abscise rest readily. Death of terminal growing plants are also, is also observed, and and it turns black, withers, and dies, resulting in a stunted plant. Next is chlorine. Chlorine, in chlorine, plant, plants take up chlorine and require it for photosynthesis. In soybean, chlorine deficiency may include chlorosis and wilting of leaves. Next is copper. Copper participates as a redox active as a redox active cofactor in multiple biological processes, including mitochondrial respiration, photosynthesis, oxidative stress protection, and iron transport. Copper deficiency upper appears first in younger youngest plants tissues. In soybean, it occurs in organic soil with high pH. Copper deficiency deficient plants is characterized by intervenal chlorosis in the upper and medium height levels. While in mung bean, symptoms appear on expanded leaves midway down the stem. Leaflets droop and appear wilted. They become lighter green and gray-green 
scalded form on the surfaces of the leaflets between the veins. Next is iron. Iron play a critical role in various metabolic process during, during plant growth and development. It is not mobile within the plants. A side effect of iron deficiency can be nitrogen deficiency since iron is necessary for nodule formation. Iron deficiency in soybean can be observed as intervenal chlorosis of the upper new leaves. Complete leaf including vein turns yellow to white and brown or within brown or whitish necrotic spots may occur near leaf edge. In mung bean, it appears on the young expanding leaves at the top of the plant. Leaves and petioles are yellow-green in color. Next is manganese. Manganese plays a important role as a pivotal plant in many metabolic and growth processes in plants, including photosynthesis, respiration, and the biosynthesis of enzymes such as malic enzymes, isocytrate dehydrogenase, and nitrogen reductase. In soybean, manganese deficiency can be observe, observed as chlorosis and the whole plant can appear pale green. While in mung bean, manganese deficiency affects the expanding leaves on the top of the plant. These leaves become distorted as they, ex as they expand. Necrosis then develop in these larger areas. Next is molybdenum. Molybdenum exists in a wide range of metalloenzymes in plants, fungi, algae, and animals, where it is a part of active enzymes, sites of and sites of enzymes. Deficiency occurs in highly acidic soils and it affects nitrogen fixing bacteria, resulting to ineffective nodules on roots. In soybean, symptoms are the same as nitrogen deficiency. It appears as stunted plants, chlorosis that appears first on lower or older leaves, and poor root modulation. While in mung bean, molybdenum deficiency decreases chlorophyll biosynthesis, and it appears as intervenal chlorosis. So, nickel is newly defined as an essential element. So, specific deficiency symptoms are unclear beyond chlorosis. Next is zinc. Zinc is involved in plant growth and metabolism, such as enzyme activation, protein synthesis, metabolism of carbohydrates, lipids, and nucleic acid, gene expression and regulation, and reproductive development. Soybean zinc deficiency appear in younger leaves with intervenal chlorosis and necrotic brown leaves. While in mung bean, young expanding leaflets curl inwards at the margins. Internodes are shortened and the plants are stunted. Older leaflets turn lighter green. And internodes are shortened and plants are stunted. Thank you for listening. So in order to properly assess nutrient deficiency, Aside, aside from visual diagnosis, it is recommended to do a soil and plant analysis.